I hope you're well and I welcome you. Today we're going to talk about something. It's going to piss a few people off. If it pisses you off, I don't care. <laughs> bold move but let's get into it so my name is charlie and i do a couple of things to do with business i run a seven figure mark or actually no i don't run a seven figure marketing agency i ran one and we sold the clients and i now run a multi seven figure coaching company that does around five hundred thousand dollars per month my job is to help people make client acquisition easy i also make these videos just to kind of have a laugh so let's get into the video today's topic and the thing that really gets my goat so to speak is people who pay to get into magazines or news outlets and this is quite a rife problem, in my opinion. So you, you've probably seen it before. You've probably heard of it. Or maybe you've even done it. Maybe you are indeed a culprit. And if you are, I do not judge you. I hold no judgment to no man. But my point is that doing the whole news thing, paid media thing, in my opinion, is a little bit of a waste of time and money. Now, people are going to disagree with me. People are going to say I'm wrong. And maybe I am wrong. I am more than open to being wrong. If someone has a coherent, cogent rebuttal, that proves me wrong, please make a video on it and I will happily make a video saying I was wrong. But I don't think I am, I might be. So here's the thing, right? Someone reached out to an Instagram a while ago and they were basically like, look mate, Charlie, do you want to be featured in Time, the Times Magazine? And I was like, fuck it out, of course I wanna be featured in the Times Magazine, mate. And then they sent me a reply and they were like, all right, it's $500 and you'll be, you'll be in Times Suburban Los Angeles. And I was like, what? No, like, well, technically you're still in the Times, so you can tell people who work with you that you've been featured in the Times. And I was like, come on, mate. And people pay for this shit, right? So there's companies, and they will basically write news articles about you that you give them inspiration on. And they will then go and distribute them in these news like outlets that have the major name of the news outlet like the Times, the Independent, like Vox, well, I don't, I really don't know, but you get the major news outlets. And then these news outlets, they have like specific local articles to areas that no one gives a shit about, right? Like, you know, Times Winchester is a place in the UK. The thing is that people pay money to get articles written about themselves. And I believe it to be a very bad business strategy, not because there's a huge downside to doing it, but just because there's better ways to get clients. Because here's the thing, right? What's gonna happen? is your, I've got my tennis ball again. Welcome back, tennis ball. People who you sign as clients, they don't give two flying fucking monkeys or shits, or monkey shits, they don't care about monkey shits. They don't care that you've been featured in a magazine with a big name that's only read by 85 year old grandmothers. They just don't give a shit. People think that like, okay, if I, if I pay for this and if I get in the Times and if I get in the Independent and if I get in the Washington Post, that's another one that I see, they think, oh, I can then say, oh, I'm featured in the Times or as seen in the independent or you know as seen in the washington post but what you're doing effectively is you're buying clout that shouldn't exist here's my philosophy for this shit if i want to get in forbes or the washington post or the independent or any of those major news outlets it should be because i deserve to be there not because i've paid to be there and if i'm going to get onto the times or if i'm going to get into forbes i don't want to get into like one of those fucking like little things that no one's ever heard of i want to get into the big covers and i want to do that through my own competency not through my bank account and this has become a problem because nowadays every fucking person can be featured on forbes on the times on the independent whatever it is in, in, in washington post everyone can say they've been featured and as seen in these places because it costs no more than a thousand dollars to get in there and so it's not actually a good strategy anymore because so many people do it and to me it's like maybe it's a vehicle for narcissism because i know for a fact that some of these people go around to like social circles and say oh yeah like they wrote an article on me in the times no they fucking didn't you paid for them to write an article on you so that you can tell clients you can competence signal it just annoys me because i know here's the argument against me and i can I, I completely see everyone's point and it's not a bad idea to do it and i'm not saying it's the wrong thing to do i'm just saying that there's better ways to go about proving your competence than paying a, a journalist you know 200 dollars to write an article on you in a magazine that no one reads that, that shares the name of the big news outlet but here's the thing it's like you will be found out <laughs> Because typically people that go and get those articles published, they're not very good at what they do. And I'm not saying that's, that's a very broad generalization. And if you've done it, I'm not saying you're not good at I'm not judging you, right? But my point here is on average, my guess would be that if you have to resort to paying, because first of all, you're usually only gonna do that if you're quite narcissistic. And there's nothing wrong with being narcissistic. I am quite narcissistic by nature. It's why I make YouTube videos and why I find it so fun. Like if you're truly good at what you do, people in your market will know who you are. You won't have to tell them that you're featured on Times and you won't have to tell them that you're featured in the Washington Post because your offer 
speaks your competence louder than any publication possibly ever could. I think a lot of people are guilty of this and I see a lot of people doing it, but I just I just disagree with it. And I think that's, a, I'm, I'm, I'm open to people disagreeing with me and I'm, I'm I think it's a healthy debate to have. I'm not open to having my mind changed. I just feel like it doesn't take much digging to realize that you're bullshitting. So like, you know, you say to a prospect like, oh, I'm featured in the Times. And then they think, really? Okay. And then they got, it doesn't take any more than a Google search for them to realize that it's not a, like the public is not the main publication. It's like some random local one. And then also it's like the article that, is written about you, it doesn't even explain anything about what you do. It just talks about you. It doesn't talk about your competence or your business experience. It talks about you as a person. So you come across as extreme, this is why I think it's narcissism, because it comes across as extremely narcissistic. Typically, what you're gonna do is the person will say to you, well, what do you want me to write in this article? And you'll say, oh, well, he's a budding entrepreneur and he's really talented and he's, and you're just basically, it, it, it's just narcissism to me that people do that. And then and then it, if you sign a client and then they're like, oh, oh, we're not getting results. I thought you were featured in the Washington Post. It's like, do you know what I mean? It just doesn't, it doesn't make much sense to me. I think there's, and you could, you could argue that, well, Charlie, you know, if you're paying for ads or, you know, if you're making YouTube videos and you're doing the same thing, you're sort of competent signaling. But I think that ads are more direct and they're more efficient because they actually get appointments and doing stuff like YouTube actually adds value to people's lives and it's not something that is virtue signaling. Now, don't get me wrong, there's lots of people that do this that make lots of money and are very successful. It is in some way, shape or form a reasonable strategy for acquisition only if your bark matches your bite. And what that means is that if you go and get featured in all this shit, people are gonna expect a lot of you because they think, if even if they, if they don't do the research and they don't find out that you've just paid some ghostwriter two hundred dollars to feature you in a in a publication that is only read by men who are over sixty and pay for OnlyFans accounts. If that's the case, and they don't do the research, then they're going to have really high hopes, and you 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 subconsciously set their expectations, and they they will see you as an authority. And if you haven't got the competence to back it up, then your whole business will shatter and fall apart. People don't really have much trust in these things anyway, because to me, if I was looking to onboard a sales rep, if I was looking to hire a marketing agency, I'm looking for results. I don't care if you've been featured, I mean, to be fair, if you've been featured in Forbes 30 under 30, that's quite impressive. But I don't care where you've been featured or where I can see you. I care about your ability to deliver results. And that is what business owners want. So you might think that it's a smart move and that all these business owners, you know, they, they, they want this thing. And it is subtle authority and it can work. But in my opinion, there's no point spending time, money, energy, and focus on things like that when you could be working on your product or acquisition channels that are way more direct and add way more value to your bottom line. I think it's very narcissistic. I think it doesn't add value. I think it doesn't help you book a huge amount of appointments. I think that if you use that as a leverage point to get people to buy, you you subconsciously set really high expectations and give yourself false authority. The thing that really gets me is you are buying false authority. Authority should be earned. It cannot, it should not be bought. If you want people to, be, like my YouTube videos, for example, I book a lot of appointments through YouTube. We have a really fun time on this channel. You can probably tell, right? fun guy, right? That's the narcissist in me. But my point is that I deserve to have the authority I have. Now you could argue that's egotism, ego egoism or grandiosity. Or, but like I've added lots of value to a very specific type of person in the market for years on end. And I now deserve to have some level of authority, which is reflected through the appointments I book because I've added value and I've created things for you guys that, that help you. At least I hope <laughs> maybe I'm just delusional as fuck. If you buy these publications, it's, it's not transparent to me. It's like, kind of like lying to your clients to get them to come on board. It's dishonest to me. It doesn't, it doesn't feel right. It's like, you know, oh, you should work with me because I've been featured in times. By the way, I, 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 I might have paid them to do it. If you were truly competent and you were truly very good at what you do, you wouldn't have to rely on these publications. So if you do find yourself in this position, I have no intention to offend you and I have no intention to insult anyone or cause any upset. The truth is, is that if you understand stoicism, you understand that we upset ourselves. It's kind of like what Marco Pierre White said about Gordon Ramsay, which is fucking savage. Marco Pierre White is that celebrity chef. He's absolutely terrifying. And Gordon Ramsay, the celebrity chef, learned under Marco Pierre White. And basically Marco Pierre White is one of the only people to have ever made Gordon Ramsay cry in the terms of public knowledge. And when Marco Pierre White was asked about that, he said, how did you make Gordon Ramsay cry? Marco Pierre, dead, dead eye, dead, you can look this up, it's on an interview, dead looks in the camera and says, no, I didn't make Gordon Ramsay cry. He made himself cry. That was his choice to cry. Fucking savage, but that's the point I'm trying to make here is like, if you're upset about this, it ain't my doing. You're upset because you got upset, not because I made you. But I'm not as savage as Marco Pierre White, so it doesn't come out as well. But back to that like authority thing, like people are buying from you under this impression that you have this level of authority because you purchased it. Just doesn't feel right, man. It's kind of like, it's kind of like dating. It's kind of like catfishing people. Are you Jess? 
Yeah, I'm Jess. You're Jess. Yeah. But I'd really like to know what you think of this. Like, if you comment anything below, you maybe disagree. Like I said, I'm, I'm more than open to being wrong here. I'm open to people, you know, telling me that I'm wrong. I'm, I'm totally cool with that. But I think that if you if you want to sign clients and you want to make money, you need to do it honestly. And if you're going around telling people that you've been featured in these places, when the reality is you haven't been featured in them, you've paid to have someone put you in a, in a back end article somewhere miles away, buried under loads of SEO so that no one can ever find it. Because technically you're being honest because you're telling people I am featured in this, but you give them this false impression that they wrote about you. So it plays that like if someone reaches out and asks you to do this, it plays on your narcissism. If you have latent narcissism like I do, you'll, you'll, you'll be more inclined to do it. But it's not a very good strategy for business in my opinion. I just feel like it's, you know, you've probably seen it. You've, in fact, you've probably even bought shit from people who are featured in all these places. You probably, you know, if you go and find top gurus, you know, you'll look at their banners and they'll have like the Washington Post logo and the Forbes logo. And you think, oh God, they've got those fancy logos. They, they must know what they're talking about. But the truth is that they paid they paid someone to write an article so they could leverage a lie to get people to buy things. And that is why I disagree with it, okay? So that was more of a rant than anything. It was just something, I want people to look out for this and just to watch out for it. Because it's pretty rife at the moment, it's, it's pretty common. And if anyone ever reaches out to you saying like, oh, I can do this for you, maybe just bear in mind what I mentioned here. If you want people to think you're good at what you do, be good at what you do. Don't pay to have people think you are good upon them buying, you will get exposed. <laughs> this is why I feel quite safe. Safety is a very dangerous thing in business. This is why I feel quite safe with, with my business and my audience, because I know that like my bite matches my bark. So I've got a very compelling offer for my company. I'm not gonna pitch you, don't worry. I've got a very compelling offer to help people get clients. And it's, it's, it's probably one of the best offers that, that anyone's ever made in this market. And we sign lots of clients, hundreds of clients a month with this thing, right? But I'm not worried about that because I know that the bark matches the bite so when someone buys our thing they're like holy fucking shit he's not lying this is actually really good and that's a very good strategy in business to exceed someone's expectations even when their expectations are already way up here it's a very good idea you know because i could go and do it i could pay like when you've got big money i could pay like 20 grand to get into all of these big places right but it would be dishonest it's not how i want to manifest my competence let's put it that way maybe you disagree if so let me hear it comment below if you need help getting clients you can click the first thing in the description that's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to pitch you anything. If you like the video, there's a button to click like. If you do like it, first of all, it'll make me very happy. But if you actually like the video, it tells YouTube that you want to see more videos like this. So maybe you'll see more of me. Maybe we'll see each other around here again. That'll be fun. You can comment anything, by all means. If you disagree, like I can't, I, I can't tell you enough. I am not attached to this opinion. I'm not emotionally invested in this paradigm. I would be, I would love to be wrong <laughs> because it might be a fucking good idea. And maybe I am. So please, by all means, correct me. But I've got an inkling I'm not. If you want to subscribe, you can go and do that. There's a little button. It just tells me that you love me, and that means a lot. All right? I'll see you in the next one. Take care.